Hello and welcome to In The Loop Wollongong. I'm Nathan. And I'm Zof. And we've been here for a year. Woo, we made it. Congrats, buddy. We're still here, they <laughs> kept us on, I can't believe it. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> Go us. <laughs> and to celebrate our first birthday, we are giving away an epic prize pack for the ultimate Wollongong experience. So stay tuned all the way to the end of the show to find out more. And no skipping forward or you'll miss out on all the other good stuff and we're watching you. This month, we painted the town red at the opening of H&M Wollongong. We learnt about an app to help you stress less while studying. Illawarra Hawks guard Rodney Clark dropped by to talk about his return to the NBL. I went on a treasure hunt. Well, kind of. I went geocaching, which is kind of the same thing. Is it? Yes. We sat down with innovative business Allotrack. In the kitchen, we have Wollongong YouTuber Varushka Walker baking a gravity-defying cake. We broke out our best blue steel for Illawarra's top model 2016. And the mighty Illawarra Hawks took on I-98 FM at Revolution Laser Arena. Now it's fine to <laughs> time to find out who last month's prize winners are. Tammy Cooper, who says her favourite dessert is chocolate mousse, is the winner of a chef's selection for two with a bottle of wine thanks to Lorenzo's Diner. Donna Wilson has won a ride for two people from Just Cruising Motorcycle Tours. So fun. And Natalie Wall has won the I Accelerate prize by telling us her advice for small business. It's to begin with the end in mind. For our first story this month, we head into the city to celebrate the launch of H&M Wollongong. This segment is made possible by Wollongong Central. Discover the city. Today is a fantastic day. We finally brought H&M to, um, to the city. Um, H&M is one of the world's best retailers and we're very fortunate to have them here. H&M, it's um, originated in Sweden um, and it's a global brand now, it's one of the world's best retailers and they're all about bringing um, fashion quick from the runway to the store and at really great prices as well. You know we had uh, hundreds of people lined up this morning um, and you know H&M, uh, not only are they bringing us on trend fashion at great prices but they're going to deliver a fantastic retail experience as well. We had a couple of keen people from 7.30am, got quite a few hours before they opened and we reckon between four or five hundred people um, just before the doors open. It was great to see H&M have so much enthusiasm and energy. They did their, um, their welcome dance at the beginning, which was uh, well received. Um, but yeah, we're very happy with the turnout so far. very excited because I was standing right there in the line and doing the shout down and the countdown and looking at you guys dancing so it was really exciting otherwise you have to travel all the way to Sydney just to go to H&M so it, I was very excited. Well I've been waiting for H&M for a while I usually go to Sydney and shop at H&M and I think it's a great store great location so that's why I'm close to home nice and easy to get in. Yeah, the Wollongong store is just under two and a half thousand square metres um, and they've got a great kids department, they've got men's and women's in there too. And just the men's clothes, it's really good and the kids, because I've got kids, so it's great to come and have a shop for the kids' clothes and one, all in one place for children, guys and females as well. So. It's cheap and I'm a uni student, so cheap is always good. The clothes and the fashion sense, it's amazing, so yeah, it definitely gets to me, it's very fleek. So today, obviously, we've opened H&M at 10 o'clock. We've got a great program of, um, of activities from today and over the weekend. We've got our Paint the Town Red Festival. Uh, we've got some great offers from our retailers. And of course, we're launching our two hours free parking every weekend from this weekend. So we think it's going to be a very busy weekend for us. You been to H&M yet? Yeah. So many new threads. So reasonably priced. You should. Mm. So next up, we talk to the bright minds behind the innovative HSC Stressless app. This segment is made possible by University of Wollongong. Stress can sometimes be seen as occurring in a cycle, like a vicious cycle. So if you've got an assessment or an exam that you're stressed about, the more you stress about that, maybe the less your, or the less well you're looking after yourself, um, so you might not be eating or sleeping well, and then that then makes you maybe not do so well in the assessment of the exam because you're tired and not looking after yourself, and then you don't perform as well as you thought, and then you're worried about the next assignment and it just flows on and keeps going. And so when you get into these cycles, they're sometimes really tricky to break, and so when you get into these, I suppose, stress cycles, they're things that can perpetuate not only throughout the HSC, but into 
young adulthood as well. Overall, we say it's a mindfulness-based meditation app for HSC students. So the app contains a series of mindfulness-based meditations, which students can listen to via their headphones or out loud on speakers if they need. Um, the app itself has several different components. So they've got like an everyday mindfulness feature where they can do things like breathing and progressive muscular relaxation, um, which seems to be so far, according to our research, one of the most popular, the progressive muscular relaxation seems to be one of the most popular features used, which is really good. And the app also contains a series of um, short videos, we call like psychoeducational videos that talk about what stress is and what mindfulness is and how these learning about these things and engaging in mindfulness might help. And then there's also a series or a section for emergency times. So if they're particularly stressed about school, or particularly stressed about friends or family. Um, and then what's a really good section is um, the one where students are allowed to set reminders. So they can set a reminder saying, okay, you've got an exam in a month and then the phone or the app will give them prompts to practice their mindfulness in the weeks leading up to the exam. So mindfulness in its most basic form is like a special way of paying attention. So living in the moment, being very present focused and present minded and only paying attention to what's going on in this moment. So for example, the app contains um, a mindfulness of eating audio recording where students are encouraged to either get a sultana or an M&M, smelling it before they put it in their mouth and seeing what it looks like and what it feels like and then once it's in their mouth what it tastes like and noticing the sensations. So making sure that when we're doing the mindfulness activities that we're just focusing on what's going on in the present and we're not allowing those thoughts of what am I going to do when I finish this because I've got to study this and I've got to do this homework and blah, blah, blah. Not letting those thoughts come in and overtake what we're currently doing in the moment, but just allowing those thoughts to come in, notice them, and then redirect yourself back to what you're doing in the present moment. You can see reductions. I know the research says that there can be reductions in stress, anxiety, depression, um, also a increased ability to pay attention in the moment and be present focused. It's, I get really good at being able to just focus my attention on the one thing and not allow external stimuli to come in and take over my thoughts. And that's something that can be applied in everyday life and not just mindfulness. If you do want to download the app, it's available on iTunes and Google Play stores. So you can download it for iPhone and Android phone. It's free to download, so no cost to you. And once you've downloaded, it just gives you a bit of, a, a bit of information about the app and says that University of Wollongong's involved. And if you'd like to continue using it, then they just enter in an email address and away you go. Hey Dave, yep. how do you relieve stress during the HSC? Tough time. Oof, I put on like 20 kilos. <laughs> oh, I think I did too. It was rough. Never recovered. <laughs> Ate everything. The people of Wollongong this month, we sat down with Illawarra Hawks import Rodney Clark to talk about his long awaited return to Wollongong and the basketball journey that led him here. This segment is made possible by Illawarra Credit Union, your experts in everything banking. My name is Rodney Clark. I am a professional basketball player here for the Illawarra Hawks. I'm originally from Oklahoma. Um, my family lives in Arkansas now, so we're southern part of the United States. And uh, growing up, I was pretty much didn't have a choice. My dad, you know, kind of forced basketball on me. But at that point, you know, I didn't realize if I loved it or not. And he got me in the gym, and I kept working and kept working. I developed this work ethic, and eventually, I got to the point to where I realized, hey. I have a chance to be good at this and I, de I developed a love for the game of basketball and in high school we were a very highly ranked team throughout my four years. Uh, we were probably ranked preseason, especially we were ranked number one, number two in the state like throughout the entire, my entire high school career. I played varsity as a freshman right when I, walked, right when I started so that was kind of rare in, in Oklahoma to be able to step up and play right when you're, you know, you're freshman, you're so young, you're so small. And, you know, there'd be games where guys would try to try to hurt me or take me out of the game and, and just do what they could just to get me off the floor, whether that was a, a dirty foul or, you know, I've, I remember getting up numerous times off the floor, just, you know, blood coming from my face or el getting elbow. Just it was it was kind of it was kind of crazy. But like I said, it got it got me ready for the next level. And it, it uh, you know, allowed me to be able to persevere and, and take some hits once I got to college and, and be physical. So it helped me out a lot. I think it was a year after my freshman year. I played high school basketball my var varsity year. I've had a really good season. And then some people thought maybe that was a fluke. So I, I went on afterward to play summer ball with one of the best teams in the country in the summer league. 
and we played up one tournament and we played a team that was uh, seniors in high school and we were freshmen and sophomores so and I ended up having an unbelievable game I had like 40 points that game in front of like every college coach in the country so I go back home and you know I thought oh it was a good tournament whatever what didn't really think much of it and then the next day when I was at school you know going into school the, that sophomore year I had all these recruiting letters from colleges and and it was at that point I was like wow, I mean, this is actually an, a huge opportunity for me. This is something if I work hard enough at it, I'm going to have a chance. So that's when I realized that. I transferred from schools. So when you transfer a school, you have to sit out a year before you get to play again. And uh, I, tra I made the decision to transfer after my junior year at Arkansas and uh, had to sit out for a year and, and was able to play one year at Butler University once I transferred. It's probably one of the hardest, hardest years of my life having to sit out and watch, though. So. I had a couple tryouts with NBA teams, and uh, you know those didn't work out. And then I had an option to maybe stay in the, the the states and play in the D League and get a chance at being called up to an NBA roster throughout the season, or I could have went to Europe. I remember with I was in my wife downtown, and I remember my agent calling and, and mentioning Wollongong and it being in Australia. And I, you know, when I heard that, I was like, oh, that could be, that could be kind of nice. My first year, you know, playing by the beach and and be able to play in a place that's, that's comfortable and people speak English. And so I didn't know a lot about it, obviously, but I just knew it sounded good. And uh, so it eventually you know, worked out and God had a plan for me. And, and I'm blessed to say I was able to come here my first year and I had, a, had an awesome year, a year that I'll never forget. The, the city is kind of like the underdog city. You know, everyone's a hardworking, got a chip on their shoulder and you know, nothing's really handed to anybody. They they all, they go work for it, and they and they deserve what they get. And that's kind of how I played coming up. You know, I had a chip on my shoulder. I was an underdog. No one believed that I could do anything that I've done so far. No one thought that I'd be where I am right now. And and I think putting on that jersey and just connecting with that just it just makes me want to play harder. It makes me want to, you know, be passionate for the fans and for this community and for the Illawarra and and Wollongong and, and you know it's in speci special just. It's, it's a cool feeling to be able to, to connect with a city like that in the community. Once I left here, each and every year I had a strong interest in coming back and you know whatever the reason was, it just didn't, we didn't get it done. But um, you know coming back here and, and being able to play here is, is it's something I wanted to do, um, especially now with having a family, having a baby on the way. You know it's a great place for your family. It's a great it's a safe place and, and we're really excited about it. Obviously you can't sit here and predict what's going to happen, but I think we have a legit. Uh, I think anyone would say, I mean, about their team in the beginning, but I think we have a legitimate chance to win a championship. Um, we have all the pieces um, to do it. You know, we have a we have a very deep team. Where we got bigs, we have guards, we have wings. We got guys who can shoot, guys who can penetrate. We got rebounding this year now. We're, I think, feel like we're a pretty tough physical team now. If you look at us on paper, we, we're covered in every single area. So that's exciting. and and. Uh, going into the season I think there's very high expectation for ourselves at least we may be overlooked a little bit and that's okay though we'd rather go in as the underdog and uh, and make some noise that way. Tickets for the Hawks 2016-17 home games go on sale September 23rd and the first game is against the Adelaide 36ers on October 7th. Go to hawks.com.au to make sure you don't miss out. Next up this month for health and well-being I searched for Tupperware in the bush. I went geocaching. This segment is made possible by People Care. Health cover full of mwah. We all know that one of the key parts of staying fit is to actually get out of the house. Today, I'm going to be trying something different, geocaching, which is apparently a great way to explore the outdoors and keep your brain active. So Craig, what is geocaching? Well, basically Nathan, geocaching is a high-tech treasure hunt uh, that's online and you can go out and find actual little bits of treasure, hidden treasure all around the world. Yeah. It's a great game. So what do you love about geocaching? The main thing I love about geocaching is that it gets you out and about. Get out there and walking and having fresh air and exercise. And the second one is for your brain, for your right. mind. You've got to look outside, think outside the square sometimes in order to find this little bit of Tupperware in the woods. All right, well, let's get started. Where are yeah. we going to go to first? Well, the first one is the closest one to us and it's just over that way. Awesome, all righty. Let's go find it. Sure. Now this one's actually quite hard. Uh -huh. Not that many people get this. So we're around me now, within five yep. meters of a radius around me is a place called we like to call Ground Zero. Ground Zero is where the cache is located. Right. So where I'm standing now, within five meters, is the actual cache. Okay. This is a very hard cache. Don't know if you'll get it, but have a look. Let's sit in here. Oh, now he's looking closer. 
This is a very good cache. Feel things that move. All right, how yep. warm am I? If, if you like a hint. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll bend down and show you for this one, because this is actually quite hard. So this here looks like a normal bolt, yeah? Oh. So if you pull it out, and you keep pulling it's on a rope, and that's the geocache here. You're untwisted. Wow. Now, geocaches always have a logbook in them. In other words, something that you have to physically sign your name in yep. with the date in which you found it. So if I unscrew it, there's the logbook. Oh, far out. I would never have found that. No. There you go, you found one. <laughs> How many do you want to find now? Ah, uh, let's do it. Let's, let's do whatever we can. Yeah, well, we've got a few in mind today. Yeah, alrighty. <laughs> alrighty, so we're here at Panorama House, and we're going to go find our next cache. Yes, we are. It's right over that way. All right, well, let's go. So go through this way. Sweet. Hope there's not snakes. Hectic. Whoa. Where is it? Well, we are at ground zero. Now, what did I say before about ground zero? <laughs> Five metre radius. Five metre radius from where I am now. Exactly right. right. Now, the size of this as well is actually a, a regular or a larger <laughs> sort of size. <laughs> yeah, All right. For the cliff. Yep. I found a chain. Yep. You know what they say if you find a chain? Got a yank on it. <laughs> Alrighty. Yep, pull that up. There you go. And that's hey. full of stuff. Huh. Whoa. Look at all this stuff. Oh, so this is the log? There's the log book. So that's the one you've got to sign. In the loop. There it is. Done. Good. Alrighty. Good job. Well, that was really cool. So, yeah. where's the next challenge? Well, the next challenge yeah. is one of my caches that I've placed out there. So, awesome. that means you're going to have to do the tree climb. Oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm out. No way. Nope. So, I've got to get in this far. Oh, yeah. Is that it? So, Nathan, as you can see, yeah. there's a combination lock up there. Right. How do you know the combination? I don't. <laughs> well, we go back to the, the, okay. the cache page itself. Yep. Have a look at the hint. What's the hint say? It's all in the name. You will need to know the year this jamboree is on, less the zero. So then we find out what year the jamboree was on. 2019. So the code would be 219. Perfect. All right, now just got to get up there. Okay. Start like that. What right. was the code, Nathan? 219. There we go. Gifts and a log in Tupperware. Yes. Alrighty. Alright. Perfect. Oh god, now I gotta get down. Alright. <laughs> good Crushed job. It. That was a good <laughs> uh, cache. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Nathan, we're at Cataract Dam now. Right. This is another cache that, uh, that I've had on the list. Yep. I'm gonna hand the phone over to you and it's all in your capable hands from here. Yep. Are you ready for it? Yeah, I'm gonna. Put the old noggin to good use. Good work. Yep. <laughs> so navigate to the cache, right. the compass, and away you go. Okay, well, this way. Very good. I'm nervous. So it's within five meters of me right now, right? So it's within five meters. Maybe put the phone, give me the phone now. Yeah, all right. You know the area, so now you need to open your eyes, open your mind, and get looking. All righty, all righty. Around here. Hey! hey! Great I did, job! I did. Yeah. <laughs> so how rewarding is that? You found it all by yourself. It didn't take too long. No, no, it's not too bad. Congratulations, you found it. So that was just a couple of geocaches. Are there more floating around the region? Oh, in the Illawarra itself, yep. there's another 1,000, even 2,000 around. So ah. yes, there's plenty more. That'll keep you busy. So if you want to find out more about geocaching, there's some helpful links in the description. And me? I think I'm hooked and I like this whole outdoors thing. Might give it another try. And now we head to iAccelerate to chat with innovative business Allotrack. This segment is made possible by Advantage Wollongong, a superior business location. Allotrack is an Australian domed transport logistics company providing a truly one of a kind solution for the industry. Oh, look, it's anything through transport industry logistics, um, you know, from your average sand and soil company. Uh, right through to heavy haulage freight. When it comes to allocation for a trucking company, uh, from the office to the vehicle, that communication's always been around paper. Okay, what Allotrack brings to the market is, is a real um, digital environment. Uh, we've built our software solution based on the driver up, 
Uh, therefore, we've engaged industry professionals uh, to make sure we identify the needs and what they really are in the market today. Our purpose is to make sure that our roads are safer for the community. It's an unfortunate fact, but uh, from, from the year ending March 2016, 204 people died in uh, 186 fatal crashes involving heavy trucks around Australia. So what Allotrack brings to the industry is uh, mandatory pre-star checklists. Um, so it's where the driver has to check certain parts of the vehicle before he gets behind the wheel and starts his journey. Uh, we've got fatigue management as well. So fatigue managers is, is uh, basically Allotrack alerts when the drivers uh, need to have their brakes and to ensure they're not overworked. Our latest offering is the Allotrack Bluetooth breathalyzer. It talks directly to our software and it's ideal for companies to get their drivers to take a 15 second test just before they get behind the wheel. So they're just some of the things and how we're trying to make our road safer. Allotrack started supporting Illawarra logistic companies from day one. Uh, now that we've designed more of a market need as opposed to a want, the growth within Allotrack uh, and its geographical boundaries are truly endless. The exciting phase for our business is just around the corner and in early 2017 Allotrack will be spreading into the international markets. Um, I'm personally involved with a team dedicated to this outcome and we're well and truly on track to deliver. Oh look, uh, you've got the mountains on one side, the ocean on the other, I mean this is a beautiful place to live. But the iAccelerate building um, and the staff and all the other startup businesses and advanced businesses here are great, it's ext extremely supportive. Um, for, look, for us personally, we're, we're at a point now in the business where we're giving it back, so we're starting to help workshop other startup businesses and, and really I guess teach them and let them know what we've done and you know the, the, the rapid increase of our business and you know the do's and the don'ts really. So we're happy to share that information around and it's a, it's a great place, great environment to be working in. Hi, I'm Nicole from In The Loop and today I'm in the kitchen with Veruska Walker, a fantastic cake designer and she's going to show us how to make her magnificent 3D anti-gravity defying cakes. So we're in for a treat. Tell me, Veruska, what are we going to actually start off with? We're going to have a lot of fun here, right? We're going to make it this spaghetti ball and I'm going to show you some tricks on okay. how to make this cake. And it's super easy, it's this fun. Yep. So we start with a basic cake, a yep. round cake. So in this case, we are working with an 18-inch yep. cake. So usually we divide the cake. You can divide as many layers you want. Yep. Uh, How many layers are we doing today? Well, uh, just two for now. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're going to put a lot of ganache. All right? Okay, a lot. <laughs> all right, so, so you put the layers. Yeah, and yep. then you use one of these uh, cardboard uh, paper. Yeah. and then you, okay. So uh, we put it right at the center, and then you get the knife, and you just wow. start cutting around. Yeah. So we, wow. we're doing that shape, the ball shape, yeah. and then we go and turn around okay. to start making rounds. So we have the, ca the cake already on the shape. It comes the best part. More we ganache. Put more ganache. Oh, oh, and I'm then in love. you just go with the ganache all over. Okay. Just Whilst yeah. you do that, I'm going to eat this cake. All right. May I? Of, of Is that course. Of course, I'm going to try this. Of course, this. you have to try it, but you oh, have to do I, a little oh. bit of ganache. Oh my God, <laughs> that's it. Diet starts tomorrow. Oh. Mm. All right, let's go. <laughs> that was amazing. So we've had this one sitting in the fridge for about, you'd say, two to three hours? Yeah, okay. just said it's hard. Now we're going to put more sugar. Oh, the <laughs> like sugar. Like, we didn't have enough of sugar, so now we're putting the fondant. Yep. Uh, it's pure sugar, yep. delicious. It's amazing. And you can buy already made, so you don't have to make it this. All and it's right, really this is easy. Skill. It's like Play-Doh. It's really easy to it work. It does look it's like Play-Doh. It's delicious to work in. If you want, if you can get your hands on a pasta machine, you yep. too. Um, uh, it makes your life a little bit more easy yep. because you can roll everything really quick. I can imagine. Okay, yeah. let's see how this works. Yeah, so oh, wow! Just, I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of icing right. sugar on the, on the bank. So, so it doesn't stick? Yeah, it doesn't yep. stick. Then All right. I'm just going to open now a little bit with my rolling pin. Yep. So I get the same in circumference of your, my cake. I'm going to okay. put a little bit of jam. Okay, so, so this is like a gelatin or a it's a jam, jam, but it could okay, be yeah. water, even water. Okay. Yeah, it's just to make the fondant to stick there. Because if I don't put it nothing, it will slide off. Yep. So All right, makes sense. But uh, yeah, we just put it there. There. Just a little bit lazy. I'm just gonna put it upside down. I would hardly <laughs> call you lazy with what you're doing right now. Lazy is going and buying yeah. a cake pre-made. This is amazing. Yeah. So then I just gonna cut it around. Yep. And then and now we're going to open the other collar, the white yep. one, to make the ball on the outside. Okay, yep, yep. 
You want to have a go and you want to try to roll? This is all right. Let's have a go. This, this, this is everyone. This is footage of me being domesticated. <laughs> oh my god! Seriously, this is this is rough. Okay, so like, do you just have to keep pressing? Yeah, and it's almost oh. like a pizza dough too. You know, I always try to make sure that it's not good. It's sticking to the bank. Yeah. Okay, am I doing it totally wrong? Is no, no, like... no, no, perfect. <laughs> okay. And then now you can just put a little bit of uh, gelatina on a cake, like I said. Yeah, on, yeah. on the actual, yes. like, okay, I'm trusting you here. Yeah. Right. So the you fondant the will master. stick there, yeah. Okay, so everywhere or just Everywhere. Like... Oh, everywhere. All right, let's get this in here. Yeah. All right, okay. You just pick it up. There is many ways to pick yep. it up with the fondant cheese. Some people like to roll on a rolling pin yep. and put it there, but... Uh, you know, I'm a little bit old school, so I'm just turning Beautiful. and pushing there on my ball. Awesome. So here's another one for you to open a past machine. There, right. yeah, hey, there we go. Good, very little good. little faith in myself yeah. there. All and right. Then, uh, then you just need to cut a little strap. This is mainly for the decoration there yep. that we have around the, the okay. plate. So we just cut a, a little strap there. Okay. Uh, so we put it just the yep. edible. We turn around and you go to your bowl. This and now is we're great. gonna make the spaghetti. You should know how to make the spaghetti. I can do this. All right. All right. Yeah. So squash it down. Yeah. I'll let you do the, the muscle work. It's <laughs> my weak little arms. All right. <laughs> All right. So good. Very good. Awesome. Okay. So now you get your cutters. Yep. And you cut again. Okay. Oh, I totally ruined that part. Yeah, okay, no, that's it's, not it's as good as good. yours. Yeah, go you slow. Made it look go good. slow. Go slow. Yeah. Right, done. Yeah, because no. then you can hold it. Yeah. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. And then you can just put it on your bowl any way you want. This is great. So you look. You using a, a real pasta machine, all yeah. right? <laughs> for, for icing sugar pasta, baby. Well, sugary pasta. Yeah, These thanks. my nephews would love this as pasta. This is great. And this is the meat ball, so we're mixing a little bit of red with a little bit of brown. Yep. You know, and it just... So you want them to totally mush not, together? Not totally, because you see, uh, you want it to look like a, a, a marble effect, you yep. know? So it looks like a... Mixed uh, in together. Yeah. yeah. You can still see both. Okay. Try to make a ball. Yeah. Uh, I like that you like, say try. <laughs> she knows now. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, a little trick we usually do is we get a piece of foil. Yeah. Just a little piece of foil. Scrunch it up everything and then we just scrunch it. Okay, I was wondering. The... It, it, these look smooth. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and you just scrunch it around. So it looks like mince. Okay, so now we're ready to put the Tomato pasta sauce. sauce. Okay, <laughs> let's do the pasta sauce. Yep. Okay. So, so as you can see, the jam is a little bit uh, pinkish. Yep. You know? So we need to make a little bit red. So we're using a okay. little bit of food color so just to, to make a little bit more red. Yep. And then make it a little bit more yeah. saucy. So I'm going to mix a little bit of white right. uh, to any, a little bit of yellow. Because as you can see, tomato sauce has a little bit of orange. Yeah. So yeah, I'm mixing a little bit of the yellow. Okay, now, the have you done this one on your channel? Because you've got a great following on your on your YouTube channel as yes, well. Have we you... almost 10,000. So we're very proud. In, in one year, 10,000 my... followers. So it's That's amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. So, so is that, you're going to arrange your meatball the way you want. We yeah. keep one for our big, you know, Ah, oh, yes, right. yes, okay, And cool. then you can get your tomato sauce. This looks and put it. Yeah. I you, trust you with yeah. this. Okay. The idea <laughs> is to put it there, everywhere yeah. you want. So you can have fun. You, you can even it. get the, the brush, you know, and even paint some of the, yeah. the pasta. Let's give this a go, all right. You really can have fun. I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually invested in this now. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> all right. You can really yeah. have fun. We're okay. going to get one skewer. Place anywhere you want okay. on the cake. So I'm going to... Place right there in the middle, you know, wow. and it, then we are going to get the, our fork. You can put yep. it in any position you want, all right? Okay. So you put a little bit of hot glue there. Okay. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Put a little bit of glue in here on the back of the wood. Yep. Very good. Okay. We have to sing a meal. The idea in here, and that's the secret, is to hide the skewer. So, try and I love your passion. I love your enthusiasm. I'm so getting into this. This is fun. 
How did I do? It's doing great, doesn't it? It looks She's amazing. She's very supportive. No, it looks amazing. <laughs> and we did it what? In three great. hours? Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> So I'm not biased, but obviously we've put both, your one and, well, I'm not going to point to them. The, the viewers can pick which one's which. Um, there's a clear significant difference, but it's fine. Thank you for, you know, spending the time and teaching me, you know. Guys, if you want to follow up on any of this, check the notes uh, below and just have a look through. Plenty of information on this wonderful woman. Veruska has got lots of things to show. So Come check it out to my YouTuber, right? Absolutely. Just put your fingers up. Uh, yep, give her lots falling. of likes. Yes, she needs yes. over 10,000 followers. So thank you so much. This is sensational. Varushka is giving away one of her amazing cakes this month, as well as tickets for her Melbourne Cake Bake Sweet Show. So if you want one, share the episode or segment anywhere on social media and let us know in the comments which of her gravity-defying cakes is your favourite. And now we head into the city to see the competitors of this year's Illawarra top model strut their stuff on a 50 metre runway to raise much needed funds for mental health. This segment is made possible by Wollongong Central. Discover the city. Hi, I'm Robin Tuveld. Creative Director for Illawarra's Top Model and Founder of Highlights on Mental Health. So you do have to forgive me because I've brought my best horse voice along today and I guess it's a combination of um, sleep deprivation and on the microphone with all the events. So the voice is needing to be pushed out today, I, I do apologise. Well, we started off uh, with the heats and we had a very robust entry, so we needed two heats, which was our first weekend and it brought record crowds into the mall, which was very exciting. And of course that produced our 30 semi-finalists who uh, then competed the following weekend. And again, a very large crowd was brought in and uh, we've had fantastic reaction from what happened in the mall that day. It really was very professional, a very high standard event and big thanks to um, Mercedes-Benz Wollongong and CMGAV who have been our partners and, and doing the staging for us, which really helped set it up in the mall very uh, appropriately. And um, with our semi-finalists, we then produced 12 finalists, which are really the it girls for a month as we go through now to October for the actual finals and final judging, which will take place on the 8th of October at the Novotel at 12 o'clock. Tickets are available $25, <laughs> all for the cause. They're uh, an amazing group of young people with a purpose, male and female, who are genuinely supporters of spreading the word, raising um, awareness for mental health. And to date we have, we're heading up towards $250,000 um, with the Highlights on Mental Health campaign and Illawarra's top model. The Highlights on Mental Health derived from the Origin Committee that uh, was known as the Light and Hope Committee, which worked to sustain the Light and Hope mental health clubhouse. It was threatening to close its doors four years ago. This year, not only are we now well and truly sustaining the clubhouse, but we've extended our help up to affect young carers of people who are dealing with a mum, a dad, someone in the family um, suffering from mental health. So the main event, Hearts Hall and Grant Awards, will be on the 22nd of October. And this will be, you know, a night that just can't afford to be missed and for $150 a seat or a table of 10 at $135. Um, it's got to be the best value in town. So seats are available online and um, it is a night that will offer everything you could expect from a, a great fashion night.
for our final segment this month, it's All Out War, as the Illawarra Hawks take on the I-98 FM crew at Revolution Laser Arena. This segment was made possible by Relativity. Not just taken, created. Hey there, Justin from I-98 FM. We are down at Revolution Laser Arena. Yes, we've got a game of laser tag kicking off in just a tick. We are taking on the Illawarra Hawks. They are big boys, but that makes them even bigger targets. Come and join us. As you've witnessed, we've got our first game of laser tag out of the way. Our team, I will admit, I-98 struggled against the Hawks, our best performer. Sean, what are your tips? Move around a lot and then uh, get all the bases and then find a place just to hide and take people out. Your team performed extremely well. I thought you guys were going to be a lot bigger targets than what you were. What was your tip number one? Well, I guess just staying together. We all just hung out together and ran around and kind of... Uh try to make a mess of things. So basically what you're saying is the Hawks are a lot more team orientated yeah. than I-98? Definitely, that's what it seems like. We're going to play a game called Disruptor. This one's my favourite game. In this game, zapping a broadcast tower doesn't give you points, it gives you abilities. So we're going to have all those different abilities active. Um, so you might gain rapid fire, um, you might gain missiles, you might gain shields, super health, super armour, all these other things. All right, another game completed. I have to admit, the Hawks did get us again, uh, dragging our team behind, Waffle Cone. Can you tell me what was going on in there? How come so slow? Uh, I was too busy hiding. <laughs> too busy hiding, not enough shooting. That's it, that's all right. All right, well, apparently we've worked out the bigger you are, the worse you are at this game, because Big Mike up here, he was just a massive target. And, uh, mate, you dragged your team down. Are they going to give you a bit of stick later? Uh, they might, but I mean, I'm, I'm a big target, like you said. And, but I do my best out there, that's what matters. It was a lot of fun out there, wasn't it? Did you find you guys actually working as a team? Yeah, definitely worked out as, as a team. I mean, we had a plan like, I get all the hits and then they take all the scores. <laughs> Gain massive energy by destroying your opponent's broadcast towers. But you'll lose energy if your own broadcast tower gets hit. Face is under attack. Face is under attack. Red face. Get out of here! Get out of here! All right, we have just wrapped up another game. I've got to say, the Hawks have made it three from three. They have really put us to shame. Asa, uh, you did pretty well on ours. You went in there with a bit of a mission, but uh, we weren't quite successful. I did well in the first game. I just came out on a negative score, so I died multiple times <laughs> over and over. I think the toughest thing for us was not knowing where we were going. I think they should have all equipped us with GPS. We might have been in a little bit better situation. But Oscar, uh, the Hawks, you guys, we've said this before, you guys really proved that working as a team seems to have worked. Yeah, we had two major uh, really objectives. One was to have Kev White on our team. He was fantastic. And the other was to get rid of Marvell. He was horrible. <laughs> and so we gave him to the Iron 98 as a trick. Yeah, well, we appreciate you passing him on to us. We thought we were getting an ace up the sleeve, but unfortunately, we got an ace down the toilet. But there we go. <laughs> Uh, well, a lot of fun, guys. You did enjoy it? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great time. There you have it. That is Laser Tag at Revolution Laser Arena. If you're looking for something to do, whether it's a big group or a small group, make sure you come on down and check it out. You can check them out online at revolutionlaser.com.au. Revolution Laser Arena are giving away an unlimited weeknight family pass worth $100. To win, you know the drill. Share the episode or segment on your social media and tag your team in the comments. Speaking of prizes, as we mentioned at the top of the show to celebrate the first birthday of In The Loop Wollongong, we're giving away the ultimate Wollongong experience. Oh my God. Oh, the pack <laughs> includes a massive range of prizes from people, places and businesses featured in the first year of In The Loop Wollongong and is valued at over $7,000. So there are literally too many prizes to mention here. So many. 
So to find out exactly what is in the pack and how to win, keep an eye on our Facebook page. And that's our show for this month. Thanks to everyone who made it possible. If you enjoyed it, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button. If you want to know more about any of this month's stories, you can find the links in the show notes below. And make sure you stay in the loop by liking us on Facebook and subscribing on YouTube. In the Loop Wollongong is only possible because of the support of our partners. So make sure you show some love to... Our media partners, Illawarra Mercury and i98FM. Our made possible by partners, Wollongong Central. Discover the city. Advantage Wollongong, a superior business location. The University of Wollongong, which produced two fine young graduates. Graduates of Unibar. That's right. Destination Wollongong, visit wollongong.com.au. Internetrix, explorers of all things web and digital. People care, health cover full of mwah. Mwah. <laughs> got it. <laughs> and the Illawarra Credit Union, experience a new way of banking. And our promotional partners, who you can see here. Our kitchen partners, pretty cool too. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on In The Loop Wollongong.